Hello my darlings, welcome to a brand new video. Today, I think I said this last time, but I think I'm finally there with the lighting for my videos. I'm gonna have a vlog coming up very, very soon showing you how I created this hopefully perfect lighting setup. The next thing that I'm gonna be working on improving is the sound because I'm not used to filming in such a big echoey room. So hopefully you can bear with me until I get the sound perfected, but I have listened to all of your feedback from previous videos and hopefully we are now there with the lighting. I need to not move so much because I have got a big light that you can see in the reflection, but we're just gonna get used to those things. Anyway, today I'm doing something a little bit different. I asked you guys on my Instagram, if you're not following me already, it's Josie LDN. I often ask for video ideas over on Instagram, so please do make sure you're following. I wanted to do some videos which weren't just all new, 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 and one of the videos that one of you guys so kindly suggested was to style the 10 oldest things in my wardrobe. And I thought that would be a really, really good video idea. I'm always talking about investing in things which are timeless, things which are going to stand the test of time. And I think one of my most used expressions is, oh, I'll be wearing this in five years time, 10 years time. So now we are gonna put that to the test. Luckily, I have had quite a timeless style for quite a long time now, at least during the past five or six years, which is really the time where I have had quite a true personal style. And I don't think my style has changed that much over the past five or six years. Anything before that, I was really quite young and not really buying good investment pieces. So a lot of that stuff is no longer in my wardrobe. But hopefully this might also give you some ideas on how you too can have a look at things which are already in your wardrobe, maybe some things which you've not worn in years and years. And at one point might have been a really special piece in your wardrobe, something that you cherish. And that's why you still own it. Hopefully I might give you a few styling ideas on how you can wear those and bring these pieces into an outfit that is absolutely perfect for 2020. Hopefully this is just going to inspire you to get a little bit more wear out of the things that you currently own. I probably should have prepared before starting to film, but I'm actually yet to do the rummage through my wardrobe to find the 10 oldest things. So I'm going to go and do that now and then I will show you the 10 oldest things in my wardrobe and how I'm going to style them. Okay, I'm back. That was surprisingly easier than I thought it was gonna be, especially I think because all of my clothes are now finally in one place. I didn't have to scurry around too far to find them. I have to say that I was hoping I would find some older bits, but because I had such a brutal clear out before we moved house. A lot of the things which I guess I purchased before I was really confident of my personal style, I did get rid of them. I didn't see the point in bringing them. So a lot of these things are not things that I'm embarrassed of. They are things which I have chosen to keep in my wardrobe. They have traveled with me from London to the Cotswolds and they definitely deserve a place in my wardrobe now. The oldest thing that I'm going to be styling is actually my barber jacket that is older than I am. So I actually inherited it slash stole it from my mum. I think it's from 1989, but I do need to grab that from downstairs. So I'll save that one until the end, something like that. The style, the style just has not changed. I was looking to link it the other day and the one that they have on ASOS is pretty much identical to my one, which is over 30 years old. So very cool. Anyway, so these pieces that I'm going to be styling now, luckily for me, still work really well with my personal style and I have invested well because these are all really beautiful classic things that I don't think I'm gonna have a problem at styling. So a lot of you will be very, very familiar with this first item. In fact, I've potentially started with the most boring and it is my original pair of Reese Tyne trousers. Oh my gosh, how many times do I want to talk about this pair of trousers? My most recent purchase of Reese Tyne trousers is in a greeny shade. I believe they are still in stock, so I'll leave them linked down below. But the very first pair that I bought, and I think I bought these while I actually worked at Reese, so that was at least six years ago, is this pair in a lilac-y color. I wear these all the time when I'm traveling. They are so comfortable. And as you can see, aside from a few loose stitches, 
they are in near perfect condition. I have spilt things on them. I'm probably going to do a video soon on how to care for your clothes to get that longevity out of them. Um, but because of their lovely neutral colour, and as you can see, the rest of my wardrobe is also pretty neutral toned. They just seem to go with everything. So let's style these in a way that I'd be happy wearing it today. So the temptation with something old is often to make it into a really casual outfit. So I've tried to do the complete opposite and make these quite smart or at least appropriate for a look that I might wear to a restaurant, albeit a fairly cozy restaurant. If I was to find any tiny complaint with these trousers, it would be that they're a little bit baggy on the knees, only the tiniest bit and far less baggy than you would expect a pair of trousers that are as well worn, as well washed, as well loved as these. So I've gone for some boots which finish just above the knees and that really helps to completely hide all of that. Luckily for me, this kind of lilac-y beige colour is really on trend again at the moment and I absolutely love it. I think it's really flattering. I have this beautiful gilet in this very, very similar tone. This is a real investment piece, so definitely one that I hope I'll be mentioning when I film a styling the oldest things in my wardrobe video in the next 20 years. Hopefully this will stay in my wardrobe forever. It's definitely a colour ooh, that I absolutely love and it's actually reversible as well. And then because the leggings have got a very much cosy vibe to them, I thought why not style with a chunky jumper. So is this an outfit that I'd happily wear out and about 100% and the thing that I love most about it is that it actually has comfy pieces at its core. So yeah, this is a very successful way of styling the oldest leggings in my wardrobe. Up next is a beautiful top which brings back so many lovely memories. It is this one here. This is from Club Monaco and I think we're going to see a running theme that it's really those premium retailers that those pieces stand the test of time and stick around in my wardrobe. That's why I always try to encourage you guys to almost think twice if you are leaning towards buying something from a fast fashion retailer. I would say why not just wait a little bit longer, save up a little bit more and buy something from a more premium retailer because then you're going to have it in your wardrobe for so many years to come. And now you can see that I am practicing what I preach. So this I featured in my romantic lookbook, I think in 2015, was that when I did my first romantic lookbook? And it was already two years old in my wardrobe. So I would say this is probably about six years old. This was a real splurge for me at the time, um, being from Club Monaco obviously it is a more higher priced retailer but I bought this because I'd really just settled in to my personal style and this just felt so true to that personal style very girly, very feminine, and yet still pretty timeless so I'm really looking forward to styling this lovely little pink blouse up again Every time I put this top on, I just fall in love with it again and again and again. The fit on this, I think, is so, so perfect for my silhouette. I just love the little ruffle on the sleeves. It is so, so cute. And I feel like this V-neck is just the most flattering, especially if you have got slightly smaller boobs. I think a V-neck is just a really, really elegant neckline. Great if you want to show off a couple of nice necklaces as well. So there are a few different ways I could have styled this, but I decided to give it a little bit more of a wintery vibe because this would naturally be a bit more of a spring top for me but so that it's appropriate for this time of year I've gone for another old thing in my wardrobe which is this Reese knitted skirt this is probably I would say three or four years old and then another very old thing in my wardrobe also something which probably should have been included in my top 10 you can see I've put a new sole in them my grey Reese mules if you've been watching my channel since the very beginning then you will be very well acquainted with these but they just go with everything I'm hoping that one day Reese might re-release them because yeah I just love them so much I also styled this with a new coat which also happens to be from Reese it is a huge huge investment piece and it's something that I really love as a slightly smarter coat, a little bit different to the more structured silhouettes that I currently have in my wardrobe. It's a beautiful shearling. It's actually reversible so you can wear it either the leather side out or the more fluffy side out and I think colour wise with the pink of the top and the cream of the skirt it just looks so 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 beautiful. This, who knows if we're going to be able to have special events this winter season but for any potential like Christmas 
events where you still want to be comfortable and not wearing like a sparkly outfit for example like dinner at a friend's house this is the absolute perfect outfit for that as i always do i'm just taking some pictures in the mirror so i remember these outfits when i'm rushing to get ready and this is one that i'm so looking forward to wearing in this autumn winter season I don't know if I'm going to fit into this next piece because I have gone up at least one clothing size during lockdown, but it is also from Club Monaco. This very beautiful, um, what would you call it? Like tweedy, not tweed, boucle? I can never remember the word for this. Basically, this kind of skirt. It's a little bit Chanel-esque, which of course means it's very, very classic. I would probably buy this skirt again if I saw it now. It's one of those things that just comes into fashion year after year. So this was a brilliant investment piece. You can see it's got some little darts on, um, on the yoke here, this little bit that goes around your tummy. So it should be really beautifully fitted. Praying I can get it on and pull the zip up, but I think this should be another one, which is fairly easy to style. The temptation with the skirt was definitely to go down the kind of Elle Woods or very much Chanel vibe because of the material, but instead I wanted to make it work with some of my favourite key pieces for autumn winter 2020, including the sleeveless knit. This is something that we're seeing as one of the biggest trend pieces for autumn winter and actually i think they work really really nicely together of course both being neutrals definitely helps and then i'm also loving more than ever brown <laughs> this season so i've gone with another fairly old thing in my wardrobe i say fairly old maybe three or four years old my brown stuart weitzman boots i probably could have included my black ones as um one of my top 10 oldest things in my wardrobe actually Yes, should have done that. But with a different colour top, black Stuart Weitzman's would have gone really nicely with this look as well. I must say, I'm just very, very grateful that I did invest all those years ago in such timeless pieces because it's making my life very easy right now. And I have to say, this isn't something that I naturally would have grabbed out of my wardrobe, but having now just styled it up, I will definitely be wearing this outfit, potentially even this weekend. We're going to quite a smart pub <laughs> on Saturday. And I think this is what I'm going to wear. So I definitely challenge you guys to also do this, also have a little game of dress up with the oldest things in your wardrobe because it might surprise you how you don't need to go shopping and you actually have some really beautiful outfits if only you would have a little play around and rediscover your love for them. How cheesy. How predictable that there should be a pink roll neck top in my in my collection of the oldest pieces in my wardrobe. This is from Stella McCartney. I invested in this I think when I was studying at the London College of Fashion, I think we'd just done a module on Stella McCartney and I fell so in love with the brand. If I remember correctly, I think I may have got this on the Outnet or Netta Porter. I know I didn't pay full price for it, um, but I would guess that this is probably around seven or eight years old. I wear it every single autumn winter. Again, do you even need me to say it? It's one of those very classic timeless pieces made from really beautiful quality material. And once again, that's something that I would buy in 2020. So let's style it up. I actually used to have this skirt in more of a bluey tone. So where this one has got pink beads, I used to have one which had blue beads on it. And the blue version was a good two years older than this one here. This is probably about five or six years old, but the blue one would have been about eight years old, I would say, in my wardrobe. I remember when I saw this, I knew how much I'd worn the blue one, but then when it came to clearing out my wardrobe, I remember that I always choose the pink one over the blue one when I want to wear a skirt like this. To be honest, I don't really buy mini skirts anymore, so it's probably not something that I would buy today, but it's not something that I'm going to get rid of because it is a piece that I truly love in my wardrobe. Again, it's really beautiful quality and I still love scallop finishes and I do love a little bit of embellishment, so let's do some styling. So I actually decided to style these two pieces together. I couldn't think of any better way of styling them than with each other. The pinks from the skirt just perfectly match the pinks in the top. And to be honest, if I'm gonna wear a shorter skirt at the moment, then I feel like I want to wear something a little bit more conservative on the top. So a roll neck is the natural choice. And instead of trying to match the white from the skirt with the perfect white in a roll neck, I thought I would pick out the pink shade instead. As always happens with artificial lighting, it is making my top look a little bit more sheer than it is in real life. But a quick solution to this would of course be to either wear a skin colored bra or wear a vest or cell underneath, no big issue. The top itself, uh, I 
feel like I'm falling in love with it all over again. It really is the most beautiful fit. It fits really nicely on the arms. I think it's a very flattering fit. It doesn't feel too big and bulky around the neckline. I will definitely be wearing this with loads and loads of different outfits. I love at this time of year to wear white and cream midi skirts as well as leather leggings. I think so many things work really nicely with a polo neck classic top like this. I did feel a little self-conscious with how short the skirt is. As I said, I'm more comfortable with more midi length things. So to make myself feel a little bit more covered up, I have gone for over the knee boots. I just love over knee boots so, so much. Um, and this is another pair from Stuart Weissman. I actually got these in the Simon outfit when I was there last September with Freddie. And I feel like Freddie would very much approve of this outfit, very pink and girly. And I also styled with my lovely new stand studio faux fur coat to make this a little bit more appropriate for this time of year. I think a snuggly layer like that contrasts really nicely with the slightly smarter finish of the skirt with it being embellished. And overall, this is a look that I absolutely love and one which I'm really excited to wear. Now we have our first more high street piece that has stood the test of time in my wardrobe. It is a pair of brown leather or faux leather leggings from River Island. And I'm guessing I probably would have paid around 60 or 70 pounds for these because they do feel really, really good quality. I can't remember exactly when I got them, um, but I think they are at least four or five years old in my wardrobe. And I know that these numbers that I'm saying are not particularly old, but I would love to do this video again in 10 years and see which items are the oldest in my wardrobe because I think it really is in the last five or six years that I have been buying these investment pieces. Whereas anything that's much older than this was really from those far more affordable retailers and things which haven't stood the test of time. So hopefully when I do this video again in a decade or two, we will see some pieces which I can say, oh, I've had this in my wardrobe for 20 years. Leather leggings or faux leather leggings, again, quite a classic style. So some Thing which should look really great for a 2020 outfit. Well, I'm not gonna lie, these were pretty hard to get on. They don't have any stretch to them. And at one point I thought I would not get them over my hips, but now that they're on, they are surprisingly comfortable and I feel like they look like they fit pretty well and they don't actually feel too tight. So yes, I'm very, very glad I persevered. I just went really classic with this outfit because I feel like something as statement as a pair of leather or faux leather trousers really works well with something a little bit more classic and simple as a pairing. So I've gone with this jumper which looks totally plain from the front but it has this jazzy um, kind of open section from the back and I think that little bit of character and difference just makes it work really nicely with the leggings. They are a little bit of a strange, um, not strange, but different fit in that they are more of a straight style. So that made me a bit unsure as to what shoes to wear, but as always, mules are my go-to and I found that the square toe mules, these are from Under the Stories last year, I'll try and find something similar to link down below, look really, really nice. Because obviously my ankles and my feet are are open and exposed. This will potentially be the kind of outfit that I'd wear if I knew I was going to be indoors all day. So if and when life goes back to normal, if I have a day of meetings and I'm going to base myself in, I don't know, Selfridges or something for the day, then this is the perfect outfit for that. I've just realized I probably could have included my first Mulberry Bayswater bag in this, but I think that that is probably a bit of a cheating option because yes, it's one of the oldest things in my wardrobe, but I think a Mulberry Bayswater bag is so classic that it's really, really easy to style. However, I do have an accessory and it is my very first pair of Valentino Rock Stud sandals. So these I invested in for my graduation. It was a little bit of a graduation gift to myself and I've told this story a few times before, but basically when you're graduating, the only part of your outfit that can be seen is your footwear. So I really wanted to treat myself to a very special pair of shoes. I'm not gonna show you these too closely because they are very battered. They have been resold at least once. They are scuffed on the heel, they are scuffed on the back, but you know what? When you're wearing them, you really can't see any of those marks. So it doesn't bother me at all. I have since invested in at least two or three more pairs of these, always in a neutral tone, but maybe a slightly deeper or different shade of pink. And I know some people think that rock studs are a little bit has been, but personally, I still love them and they are still the most comfortable heels in my wardrobe. In fact, I'm going to a friend's house for a nice dinner tomorrow night, so I may even wear them there. So let's see how I would style my hmm, eight-year-old. 
I think they're about eight years old, eight-year-old Valentino fox studs. So I've actually gone a little bit rogue with the Valentino sandals. The natural thing to do is, of course, to wear them with a dress, but I decided to find a slightly different way of styling them. So I've gone for my faux leather leggings from Topshop. They are currently in stock and they are so affordable and so comfortable. You might have seen these in my very recent vlog. And then to pull in that pinky colour, I've gone for this gorgeous cardigan top, which I love to wear with my Gucci belt. And I feel like this is a really nice, smart, casual outfit. It is the definition of smart, casual. The heels really help to elevate this outfit, whereas the rest of it really is, at the end of the day, just a comfy piece of knitwear and leggings. The great thing about the Valentinos is with the rock studs, they really are so eye-catching. So you can actually go pretty casual with your outfit and the rock studs instantly make it so much more elevated. So if you do have an event where you're not quite sure what the dress code is, you're not sure how smart to go, these shoes are always a real fail safe for me when it comes to elevating and otherwise, potentially quite a casual outfit. And we're finishing with three pieces of outerwear. So these should again be pretty easy to style. Firstly, my Burberry quilted jacket. I got this from Bista Village. I definitely wasn't blogging at the time. Um, so this is probably around eight or nine years old. It's got the Burberry check lining. It's actually a very, very practical jacket. It's almost like a rain jacket, very Burberry in your face when you open it up. It's got these very handy little pockets. And I think I'll get a lot more use out of this with where we live now. I didn't really wear it that much when we lived in Clapham, but I think with the new country lifestyle that we have here in the Cotswolds, this is something that I'll be getting a lot of wear out of. So I thought the time that I'm most likely to wear a coat like this is when I am having a bit of an outdoorsy day. So I've made my outfit appropriate for that. Having said that, it is Burberry. So I've just been doing all the styling clips with one of my cuffs folded up and one of them folded down. So you'll have to excuse that in the styling clips. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to keep it really classic and comfortable. So I've gone for a roll neck top, surprise, surprise, in my favorite tone for the autumn months, brown <laughs> and then again unsurprisingly very very predictable my newest Reese Tyne trousers in the green shade I feel like when I'm going for a bit of an outdoorsy countryside look these trousers and a roll neck is just my absolute go-to I did want to make it a bit more jazzy though because as I said it's Burberry so it could be appropriate for a pub lunch or, or I don't know going on a nice walk with friends so I have popped on a slightly smarter pair of boots these are my two-year-old snake print boots from Dune that I believe have been re-released this year so I will hopefully be able to link some similar ones down below but yeah this is a fabulous outfit I definitely need to take this coat downstairs so I get more wear out of it although I feel like it may already be a little bit chilly for something like this because it is fairly thin perhaps I could go full-on Burberry and wear my Burberry scarf with this outfit as well this next jacket is probably only four or five years old, but it really does demonstrate a point very well. Where I am often encouraging you to invest in classic pieces, it is for good reason. This Reese Lawson coat is actually one of the pieces I have featured the most on my blog and on my YouTube channel over the years. I'm sure you'll be able to find many a photo of me wearing this on my Instagram as well. But it was a huge investment at the time. I think I paid between three and four hundred pounds for this, but oh boy have I got amazing price per wear out of this. It's so timeless and classic. The silhouette is that of a coat that will never go out of style. I can honestly never see myself getting rid of this coat, so I'm really looking forward to styling it. So I have to say, I feel like I could literally have styled anything with this coat. It is so, so versatile, but I always think that pink and this beautiful tan kind of brown shade goes so beautifully together. So I have worn my favorite pink suede skirt and a classic white high neck jumper. This one is from And Other Stories. I featured it quite a lot in my autumn edit. It's just one that I love wearing because it's so, so comfortable. The jacket, of course, just totally, or coat, I should say, not jacket, just totally timeless. One of those pieces that really is never going to go out of fashion. Always adds a really smart and warm finish to the look. Of course, you could wear it with an outfit that's a lot more casual than this, but because of the slightly smarter silhouette with the, with the structured lapels and the fact that it could be worn um, double-breasted. I feel like it goes with smarter outfits as well, despite the fact that it's a very neutral 
and quite a casual colour. This kind of coat I always think looks so beautiful with a crossbody bag so I've added my new Chloe Tess and footwear wise I always think a pair of heeled boots is what you need for a longer coat so I've worn my boots which are a couple of years old from Reese but I did notice they have an almost identical pair in right now. That's another benefit of buying from slightly more premium retailers. These timeless designs very rarely change year after year so something that you bought three or four years ago might be almost identical to something that's currently in stock in fact i predict they will be bringing out the 2020 version of this coat very very soon if not it already being out and if it is i'll definitely leave it linked down below because this is an investment piece that i would recommend a million times over so this is the final look and once again i feel like i could have worn anything because to be honest, since we moved to the Cotswolds, I am wearing my barber jacket with absolutely everything. Mostly I would say slightly more casual outfits. I literally wear it every time we go walking the dogs, when I'm going to the gym, to so a farmhouse, to a pub lunch. I just feel like I need to break out of the barber mold, but I did want to show it to you because it is the oldest thing in my wardrobe without a shadow of a doubt. Only very, very recently has the zip just started to come away at the bottom, which is a shame, but not something that I can't fix with a quick zip over with the sewing machine. I'm not gonna lie, this is probably not the kind of outfit that I normally wear it with, but I did want to experiment and show you something a little bit different. But if you are regularly watching my vlogs, you will be seeing so many different ways that I'm wearing the barber. I wanted to pop on something slightly smarter, so I've gone for my pink Reese jumper and leather leggings and I have to say we're ending on a bit of a fail here because I don't think that leather leggings and a wax jacket actually go that well together and then just to top off the craziness I've gone for my fluffy Ugg boots so yeah bit of a bit of a weird one I guess I was trying to prove the versatility of this jacket but yeah there we go so darlings I really really hope you enjoyed today's video I know the lighting has changed hugely since I started filming but I've literally been filming all day and it's pretty much dark outside now so I hope it's not looking too awful in the comments I would love to know what is the oldest piece in your wardrobe and would you be tempted to wear it now could it be styled with some things which will bring that item into a 2020 relevant outfit I'd love to know so let me know it down in the comments section below and darlings if you're not subscribed yet please do i have lots more fashion videos coming your way as well of course as the daily vlogs if you enjoyed the video please don't forget to give it a thumbs up and darlings i will see you very soon in the next one thank you for watching bye